What's up, Mortgage Coach Community? Dave Savage going live with Travis Fleury. Uh, what's up, Travis? I'm looking forward to learning a little bit more about how you've become a black belt with Mortgage Coach. Yeah, cool. Great. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, thanks for helping with the training of Mortgage Coach at the company you work for. And uh, it looks like you've been using Mortgage Coach for just a little over a year. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, our uh, company very conveniently got on board with Mortgage Coach right around the time that uh, COVID was starting. Of course, at that time, we didn't really know what that was going to mean for us. But as, uh, you know, as time went on, it became very clear that uh, the Mortgage Coach software and how that helps us create efficiencies, specifically last year in the refi market that we had, uh, it was astronomical. It ended up being a huge time saver trying to deal with applications, putting together scenarios for folks and trying to kind of pre-vet uh, refinance benefits ahead of full applications. Yeah, well, and you became a black belt pretty much in a year. So you've done over 300 total cost analysis. Uh, and that's, that's, I guess that's what I want to find out. So first of all, for anyone who doesn't know you, uh, if you could tell everybody what market you're in, describe your mortgage practice a little bit and how many loans you think you're closing, you're on track to close for the year. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm up here in New Hampshire. So uh, I'm licensed in Maine, New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Uh, we don't have the same sort of loan sizes that a lot of the folks in the New Yorks and the Californias have. But um, yeah, overall, I, I do about 200 loans a year. It works out to be right around $50 million a year in volume. Uh, and it's it's all referral based, past clients, realtors, financial planners, CPAs, that sort of thing. What percentage of your clients are realtor referrals versus CPA and financial planners? Because I look at those as Two really different, I mean, great partners, but very different. Yeah, I most, of, most of it, definitely most of it's realtor partners. Yeah, we, we, I do get some stuff from the CPAs and the financial planners. I just got a CPA referral today. Um, but for the most part, uh, you know, especially for the purchase business, most of that is realtors. The refinance stuff is, is repeat clients and past client referrals. But uh, most of the purchase stuff, we've got a, a strong, close network of, uh, of realtors that we work really well with. Uh, that we're able to close things quickly, low drama, all of that stuff. So that is where most of the referrals come from. Right on, right on. Well, I know your your mortgage coach why has evolved a little bit because you started right at the beginning of COVID. And I'm imagining it was like, oh, digital virtual connection was the driver. But as it's evolved over the year, you know, what is your mortgage coach why today? You know, why do you use mortgage coach with all your clients? Yeah, so we still um, we still try and use mortgage coach as much as possible. I mean, I, I try to do it to create efficiencies wherever we can. Like I keep saying, um, that's the most important thing to me. To anything that we can have a more efficient conversation or or just you know determine a benefit right off the bat with somebody, I think that's really impactful for our clients. Um, as far as how it's evolved, I mean, really the the where I learned to use a mortgage coach, where I, I cut my teeth with that was just at the beginning of the refi boom, which was just a, a perfect opportunity to kind of have no choice but to get into the software uh, and familiarize myself with the ins and outs of it. Uh, and then as time's gone on, certainly we have started sharing that more with um, with purchase borrowers, with our realtor partners, and that sort of thing, uh, trying to use it as much as we can. Uh, and doing TCAs that evolve throughout the process, you know, I mean, we might we might start early on in the prequal process with somebody uh, and show them what examples would look like maybe over a range of $100,000 worth of price ranges. Uh, then uh, as they might be interested in putting an offer in on a property, we might cater that TCA then to show them a different range of offer prices that they might want to put in on that property. Uh, once they're under contract, we can change that over and start talking about maybe some different ways that we could structure the PMI. Now that we have the specifics of purchase price, property taxes, and all of that, we can talk about monthly versus single premium versus lender paid. Uh, and then furthermore, when the time comes to lock their rate, we can have the point conversation uh, as far as, hey, does it make sense to take a slightly higher uh, interest rate to get a lender credit if, if funds are tight? Does it make sense based on their shorter long-term goals with the property to pay points to get a lower interest rate? And we try to, where we can and, and where it can be impactful, continue to bring the TCA presentation, let it evolve over time through our conversations with our clients, and then where appropriate, you know, sharing that with the realtor partners as well. So, I mean, the word I keep hearing is just efficient communication. I mean, you, yep. and obviously going into COVID, it changed how we communicate with folks. And now today you've really adopted so that whether it's a purchase, whether it's a refi, whether it's a pre-approval, whether it's an escrow and it's go time, you're, you use a mortgage coach to efficiently communicate with clients around rates and fees. 
Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, for us, uh, you know, those of us who've been doing this for a long time, I've been in the industry for 16 years, so not as long as, as many others. Um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff just kind of makes sense to us. But most of our buyers and a lot of my buyers are first time home buyers, you know, but it just it doesn't make sense. And to have the ability to show things visually with charts, with graphs, explain things. I mean, even if it's only minor differences between programs, um, for people to be able to see the graph, see what minor impacts and interest rate do to their overall financial picture over time, um, all of that stuff. I mean, what we hear time and time again uh, is uh, even people, once they've talked to other lenders, especially, they go, oh my God, this is so much more than I've gotten from, you know, so-and-so, whether it's the local bank or the, you know, the internet lender or whatever the case may be. Like, this is amazing. Yeah, it just makes so much more sense. It, it really is once you can see it and it's right in front of you and you can see the numbers and you can make the decision for yourself. Like, we'll, we'll help, we'll provide guidance, you know, we'll, we'll do, uh, make whatever recommendations that we want. But ultimately the choice is up to, you know, is up to the client. And I think, you know, one of the other important things, and I've heard you tout this before as well, Dave, is, um, when you give people options up front, they're less likely to go elsewhere seeking other options, right? It's not just you go into the bank, here's our loan, here's what the rate is today, here's what it looks like. It's, hey, now that we understand your scenario and your goals, let's give you some different options for you to consider and let's talk about how they might be, uh, you know, how one might be better for your personal, you know, financial situation. Well, you you are there, brother. You, I mean, you're clearly, you've evolved. How, how long did it take you or your team, you know, you and your team to learn to use Mortgage Coach? How, how much time uh, or how many TCAs did it take you? It was, uh, it was kind of funny. The set, we did two rounds of TCA training. Uh, I think Brian uh, on your team was doing some TCA training with us. I was one of the, the, the beta tester groups, I guess, as it was first coming on board. Um, and really before the second meeting, I had Mortgage Coach down to the point where, um, you know, I was able to, to ask questions and put forward a, a presentation that I had done that uh, where it was like, oh, my God, you've really been doing this for just like a week or two. I mean, once you get used to the software, if you're at all a techie person, it's so intuitive. And then the more and more that you get used to it, just the more that it evolves, you know, back then in the first month, could I have done an appraisal gap analysis or something like that? Probably not that I would have probably needed to really wrap my head around that. But the more you get familiar with the software, different scenarios you run for different reasons, all of a sudden it's like, okay, I've got this unique situation. How can I get this into mortgage coach so that it makes sense? Uh, and then you program it the way that you think it should be. You preview it, kind of work through it, look through everything to make sure it's accurate. And if it's not, figure out where you've gone wrong, you know? So, so how many days or weeks did it take you? I mean, it realist, uh, to be to be totally proficient, it probably took a, a month. Uh, to be able to do a refinance TCA, it probably took me about three days. Got it. And then how many times... Did you need to do it until you had it wired? Like 10, yeah, 20? For, for, the, for the typical scenario, for the stuff that we're doing on the regular, you know, for a basic refi, basic purchase TCA, I mean, after about a month or so of doing that, it was like, okay, I'm going to do a TCA for this. I need to budget five minutes. And that's what I can do a, for, for almost any scenario. I could do a TCA, refi or purchase that's not overly complex with, you know, but just your typical... 15 year, 20 year, 30 year, you know, reinvestment strategies, purchase price ranges, that typically takes about four to five minutes start to finish without even using a template. So it's, it's just cool. very fast at this point. And then I noticed you used the word template because templates can take it down to two minutes where right. are you using both program templates and strategy templates? I've used zero templates. Oh, <laughs> Good. I know, I've tried to get into the templates and I go, ah, oh, God, you know what? I know exactly how I want this to look. Let me just do it myself real quick. And All right. I'm going to have four minutes later. I'm going to, I'm going to stick Brian on you for like, I think within 10 minutes of training, uh, but you, you, can, you can literally get it down to two minutes uh, yeah. using strategy and program templates. So I'd love, cool. I'd love to do it. Yeah. Let's do, if you don't mind, I want you to share a strategy that you're doing in the market right now before you share your desktop. I want to know, what do you say to the consumer, you know, the borrower before you send it? Like, how do you frame what a total cost analysis is? What is your scripting so that sure. when they get it, they're, they're excited about it and they understand it? So I probably do 90% of my delivery of TCAs uh, either over a Zoom call or like live over the phone with a client. 
I have not so much adopted the video portion of it uh, like I should have. Uh, so most of the stuff I'm trying to have that interaction with people live to be able to address questions, you know, kind of get a feel for making sure that they're understanding the presentation. So That's awesome. That's good. It's, it's yeah. And so a lot of what I'll generally do once we have a TCA prepared, I've got an email signature that's queued up that just says like if it's a refinance, it says, hey, great news. Your refinance analysis is prepared. Uh, use my Calendly link here and let's schedule a time to review it together. You know, please be in front of a computer or by your phone to, you know, to do that. So that takes them over to my Calendly link where they can just book directly on my calendar to try and save time trying to, you know, play phone tag back and forth. Uh, and then from there, whether it's over the phone or over Zoom, um, at that point is is when we'll kind of hop into the presentation. But what what do you say before you give them the link? And let's let's do it in Zoom right now because you and I are in Zoom. So why don't you almost pretend that I'm a borrower? Say what you say and give me a link. Yeah, sure. Uh, so normally I would say, hey, thanks so much for providing that information to us later on today. Uh, later on today, earlier today, uh, we've got a presentation prepared for you for your refinance. Uh, you know, so I'm going to send you this link. Let's go in and, and go through it together. Uh, so the one that I'm going to share now uh, is. And would you put it in chat or would you email it? I would typically email them the link so that they've got access to it later on. And I'll tell them that, you know, the link is going to kind of live on in infamy. So even when we're done our call, when they want to click through a lot of the menus, the more info buttons, they can get in there, they can figure out, you know, how these graphs are coming up with the numbers exactly, you know, people are uh, engineers, for example, very analytical people, they really want to get down into the nitty gritty of like what makes this graph have this number. Um, so yeah, generally through through email, and then as time goes on, if we end up making changes to the, uh, to the presentation, or they want to see some different numbers, depending on that scenario, we'll determine whether or not we kind of copy this TCA to a new TCA so that this one lives on or just make edits in the existing TCA so that uh, you know it's only showing, we're not overwhelming them with a bunch of different links with a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different options anyways. Okay, um, cool. So well, let's, uh, one, why don't you share do one and let's you know see a strategy whether you wanna do a purchase or a refi. Yeah, so I've got a debt consolidation one up right now that we can do. I know that's Ooh, a newer yeah. feature. For that's a new feature. For like I, I love showing our new debt consol TCA. All right. So here is uh, this one. This is for a client that actually just closed a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they had a little bit of debt to consolidate, not much. Uh, they had a little bit of a higher interest rate and they were looking for some additional cash out as well. Um, so we had put together this option. They were in a, a, a 30 year loan, but they were about five years into it. Um, by paying off some of their higher interest rate, higher payment credit cards, obviously, you know, the numbers that start hopping out immediately are like almost $1,000 in monthly savings. Um, the option that these folks actually ended up going with, uh, which you know I think arguably makes good sense, they ended up doing the 15-year conventional option um, to save over $500 a month. You know, a more significant reduction in their um, in their interest rate as well. Uh, but really, I think for them, it was as we go over here and we look at the interest in mortgage insurance in 30 years, it's so significant. You know how much money they would save in the long term while also saving you know over 550 bucks a month. Um, so this was a phenomenal scenario. And then the last option that we'd kind of built in over here uh, as well, and let me just see, I've got my dashboard up on my other screen here. Um, we programmed this one here to show uh, if they reinvested that $550 a month into uh, you know working with a financial advisor, invested into the market, uh, if they could earn uh, on average say 9% returns over time, uh, when we start looking at their net worth chart for that, which hopefully this will update appropriately here. Hey, there we go. Um, so yeah, when we start looking at that and going, hey, if we can take your monthly savings of $550 and allow that to amass in an investment account for you that would presumably turn you into a millionaire using nothing but the monthly savings that we're creating for you, um, that's so impactful for people. I mean, some people that have a million dollars, it's just not even on their radar that that would even be you know, possible. Uh, to have a million dollars that we're creating in wealth purely by reinvesting monthly savings with a different strategy, um, that's fantastic. Yeah, that, that's amazing. So uh, after seeing how much they could save in interest and how much they could uh, potentially make in wealth if invested wisely, uh, that was the option that they decided to go with. So very, very cool. Keep in mind, we do have some new debt consolidation features that would allow you to show that in... I don't know, better way in a more dynamic way. So just 
keep a heads up. I mean, what you did is awesome and obviously it worked, but just know that there are some new features um, when it comes to debt consolidation. And we do have, give me, I think if I change that, because I do have that in here, I think I just, oh, no, because yeah, there was uh, the debt cons. Oh, you know what, Dave? When I copied this over earlier to sterilize the client info, it removed all the debt stuff. So when this was delivered wow. to the client, it actually did have that data in here with the debt consolidation tools that was built okay. out correctly. I just didn't catch it. It's okay. Actually, if you could forward me a link to it, if you're watching this and you want to see the full functionality of the mortgage coach debt consolidation analysis, we'll put a link down below and it'll it'll show the whole thing. So let's let's do a purchase TCA if you don't mind. Um, yeah. So I do have one of those that I brought up. Um, you know, I, for this client, I will tell you it was very impactful. Uh, though, as you look at the numbers, you know, you might go like, "Oh, this is fine." Uh, for him, this was one of the presentations where uh, we went through it, and he was like, "Oh my God, this is so much more than I've gotten from the two other lenders that I talked to. I can't even believe it." So we had a client who uh, is a first-time home buyer, a uh, young dude. Uh, and he has about a total of about $30,000 to play with. But of course, he doesn't want to use all of his money towards buying his first house if he doesn't have to. Um, on a little bit of a lower price point, certainly in our area, we're, we're talking $240,000 is extremely affordable housing and hard to come by around here. Um, but regardless, he had, talking to, he, he had talked to a specific uh, spaceship lender uh, that we'll call it. Uh, they touted how they have the uh, lowest mortgage insurance uh, in the industry uh, and that really resonated with him. And I'd said, okay, I can see that mortgage insurance is going to be a competitive advantage for us in this scenario. We've got multiple PMI companies that we can place this with. We've got multiple different ways to structure the PMI. I know that that's something that the other lender is very unlikely to have discussed with him. Uh, so I put this together showing him. Uh, so they had qualified him for specifically 3% down up to $240,000, they told him. Um, by the time that we had actually worked it up, we said, okay, maybe 3% down works, maybe 5% down makes more sense. Let's look at the differences between monthly PMI and the single premium MI. What does that do for your cash to close and your monthly payment? Um, and uh, then in addition, we actually qualified him and we'd, we'd reviewed all of his documents, which had not happened elsewhere. We actually ended up being able to qualify him for 275 and not 240. So it was a win-win all around. Yeah, so let's let's click into this. So a couple of things I want to call out at the top, guys. You'll notice that he's got his company brand and logo. Uh, you'll go to the bottom. You'll notice the integration with Experience.com and the most recent review showing up. And then in this particular client, I, I just want to make sure we call out like he understood what the client was looking for. He understood who his competition was, and he was able to show some MI options. And we hear all the time that showing different MI options that are tailored for the client uh, is a great strategy to win the deal. So um, if you can click on the more information and just kind of call out where what you did that was different than the other lender or that you know really gave you a competitive advantage and was yeah. valuable to the consumer. Sure, yeah. So we had talked about, um, and, and again, this was copied as well. So we had this stuff in here highlighted appropriately. So when he goes through it later, he can see it. Um, but yeah, we talked about the differences in mortgage insurance. And as much as somebody might say they have the lowest mortgage insurance in the, you know, in the industry, the fact of the matter is we're talking about, you know, 40 to $60 in mortgage insurance. It's not, you know, the, the, there, there's no way that the competitor for this 3% down scenario is at $20 or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's got to be so close. So we have the discussion about mortgage insurance. You know, we use the, uh, the payment stream here to be able to estimate uh, how long they'd have to pay the mortgage insurance for based on normal amortization and PMI cancellation. So paying the monthly PMI for 101 months under the, the regular schedule uh, versus being able to just do our single premium mortgage insurance and just buy it out as a lump sum. That's not an option for a lot of people. You know, it's not an option. Uh, people who are doing 3% down financing oftentimes they're scraping by to do the 3% down, never mind their closing costs. You know, lately gone are the days of seller paid closing costs. Uh, that used to be so common. We used to do 70% of our purchases or something had the seller paying some or all of a buyer's closing costs. Uh, and now in this market, I mean, we've closed over 100 loans this year. I think we've had two or three that had any seller concessions. I mean, it's just been such a 180 degree turn in the last year and a half or so. Um, so we have the conversation about just that additional upfront cost, but the monthly savings. Uh, and then of course, you know, just calling out to, you know, in the grand scheme of things over time, 
it's not that that ends up, you know, resulting in an astronomical amount of, you know, savings over 30 years, you know, three grand over 30 years, you know, but it, it's something where he had never heard the concept of single premium mortgage insurance, never mind, you know, wrapped his head around it uh, to be able to, to say, hey, you know, here's something that makes sense or doesn't make sense. If, if he's looking at it, you know, starter home, first time buyer, this five, we did talk about the five years. He was saying, yeah, I'd probably be there for at least five years. Okay, well, at the five year mark, you know, if we were going to choose what was going to save you the most money in five years, assuming you felt comfortable with the cash outlay, you are going to save almost a couple thousand dollars if you were to do 5% down uh, instead of the 3% down. But again, if, if five years was the hard and fast number, maybe the single premium mortgage insurance isn't actually the best option here. Really, you'd end up saving a little bit more money doing the monthly PMI option, which is not always going to be the case, you know. And, and here's the deal, guys. It's, you know, I talked a lot about science of selling. You give them options. They pick an option. They're invested. But science of selling is also trust and transparency. And when you you were the one, even though there wasn't a lot of tangible value between different programs, you showed the transparency of that. So he trusted you more than the other person. He was wowed by that. Again, you win the loan. And you also educated the family. And so they can make a better decision for themselves. And in today's market, especially with all the bidding wars going on out there, when a client has more clarity, they have more confidence. And when they have more confidence, they're more likely to make the winning offer. Uh, I don't know how competitive it is in your market, but uh, it's you know a lot of value. So go ahead and stop sharing your screen. Let's let's sure. go into wrap up mode. You you had mentioned that you've you know you've learned how to use mortgage coach with refis purchases, whether it's pre approval, it's in escrow. There's a change of circumstances and you're updating it. I mean, it yep. sounds like you've really learned how to we do were, this. We were doing that today, actually. We were just, somebody decided they wanted to do just out of the blue, you know, an extra five percent down. And it was like, yeah, we can scrawl some numbers on paper or, you know, copy and paste something into an email. But to the point now where it takes more time to type numbers into an email than it does to just create a TCA. So, I mean, it's not only is it easier for the borrower to see, it's actually faster for us to get the point across with the information so that they have something to review that's more meaningful. I mean, even, yeah. even though it seems like it's more work, once you get used to the software, it absolutely takes less time. So more efficient. So two quick questions and wrap up. Sure. One, are you doing any annual reviews or being proactive? Like, hey, I did it up front and now I'm using it to go back and deliver value and service to your past customers. Have you added that to your process yet? We haven't. And only, um, I'll tell you honestly, one of the things I keep talking about efficiency because it's uh, it's paramount to be, and we continue trying to uh, uh, improve the process. I mean, as it stands, the amount of hours uh, that, that I'm working on a regular basis just to be able to keep up with the stuff that's coming in organically uh, has not allowed me to spend really any time needing to go out and source any business whatsoever, um, which is a good problem to have. But at the same time, we do hope to kind of beef up our processes. I've got a couple of... Um, of LOAs that are uh, relatively new, uh, one newer than the other, uh, that are a big help. So as we start getting them more used to our systems, which I think, as you know, we're changing over all of our internal systems here in the next month or two. So we need to adapt to that. And then we do hope to be able to use this as more of a tool to, to bring in some additional business kind of unsolicited. Good. Well, make sure you're using those, those you know, automated integrations that we have. I think you guys have some integrations that are happening through Total Expert. Yep. And, and it's just a question of getting that fit in, into your process so that you understand right. it. Last question, and then we'll wrap it up. Are you integrating Mortgage Coach into your, you know, your realtor conversations? You know, do your partners know about it? And if so, what are you doing and how are you doing it? Yeah, for sure. So um, a lot of times we have the, we'll have that conversation with, with our realtor partners up front uh, in certain circumstances where depending on the scenario when they're trying to, oh yeah, well, you know, they'll usually call in advance with some sort of scenario about their buyer, you know, trying to figure out what to do with them oftentimes. And in those cases, it's a good opportunity to go, well, look, we're going to do a little bit more than maybe the average lender. You know, we've got some great software that's going to allow us to do rent versus own analyses. You know, I don't do as many of those as I should, but in the past when I've done those, uh, it has resulted in, uh, you know, looking at that net monthly payment calculator versus what they're doing, uh, paying in rent right now has been extremely impactful for folks and actually has resulted in some people being more comfortable making more aggressive offers on properties when they're seeing, you know, looking at net monthly payment versus that full monthly payment. Uh, so, you know, we try and bring realtors up to speed on that a little bit. And then when we're sending out, um, 
you know, a link, whether it's like I was saying, maybe a, 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 a range of prices over $100,000. Um, that's a good opportunity to actually bring the realtor in on that scenario as well. Uh, you know, bring them in on the, the link to the client after we've gone through it with them. Uh, and then lastly is yes, when they're looking at making an offer on a property, a lot of times they don't come to us saying, hey, I'm going to do an offer of this much money. They're saying, hey, I'm looking at doing an offer on this property. Can I see what the numbers would look like at this price, that price, that price? And maybe it's $5,000 apart from one another. Sure, we can, you know, we could point them to a mortgage calculator on our website, or we could point them to Google, or we could, we could do it ourselves and type it into an email. But again, it's just so much faster to throw it into Mortgage Coach. And then that's a perfect opportunity to be CCing the realtor on that as well, so that the realtor is looking at it. It allows them to also provide their opinion on what they think is a reasonable offer. Uh, and it allows them to see the level that we're going to that almost no other lenders in the market are. Boom. Well, congratulations, brother. You have adopted Mortgage Coach. Uh, you've been doing this for 13 years, but it sounds like uh, this 13th year since COVID, Mortgage Coach really elevated the efficiency in what you're doing it. So it was 16. You. Sometimes I wish it was 13, honestly. Oh, it's the worst possible time, but we won't go. All there. right. 16. <laughs> um, so, but, but thank you for being a leader, you know, and thank you for helping adopt Mortgage Coach at the company you work at. And part of being a black belt is just helping other folks. So thank you for all that you do. Um, any closing thoughts you have for the mortgage coach community before we wrap it up? I mean, the only thing I, I say this to, uh, to folks in my company as well is, is you know, take the time to, to learn the software. It seems cumbersome at first if you're not already using it. There's plenty of great resources in, in the videos that are online. You know, a lot of that stuff, just adopt the, you know, adopt the mortgage coach model, adopt TCAs for as many clients as you can. Um, and, and commit to it because it will, it will absolutely result in additional business. The, the clients that I've had referred to me where they've said, hey, so-and-so said you'd put together this really cool presentation to, to show me all my offers uh, or all my options. Um, we'll go, yep, yep, we'll, we'll definitely do that for you. So, I mean, that is one of the things where when people are telling their friends and family about, uh, hey, go get a mortgage with Travis, they're specifically referencing the presentations that we're doing for them throughout their process. So. Well, right on, brother. Well, thank you so much for the time, guys. This is a wrap. If you got value from today's interview, give it a like down below. If you have questions for Travis or myself, put those down below. We'll get to them. And um, have a great day, Travis. Thank you again. Great. For Thanks so much, Dave. Take care, everybody.